minimum wage, non-unionized service sector jobs without benefits or pensions. And, you know, that, that's, that's not a good thing. The economic crisis has, uh, has the real potential mm -hmm. to cause black workers and our communities further despair and more poverty. Mm -hmm. So the current economic crisis and, and job loss are the problems and the root causes for it is not the fault of us, the workers. We all know that uh, the root problem has been caused by corporate greed. You only have to watch the news every night yeah. and see who's going to court and see who, who the governments are bailing out in terms of the banks, right? And the government is also at fault because it's lacked of putting in place laws to ensure good jobs remain here in Canada and employers just cannot close man manufacturing plants or take goods like cars and clothes or even food products nowadays and have them produced overseas and then mm -hmm. ship them back to us yep. to have us have to pay for them. Um, you know, because uh, in, in terms of this, what ha as we all know, what happens is this lays off workers here in, uh, here in this country and, you know, they reproduce these pro products in um, China, India, Mexico, and, and they bring them back to Canada to sell to us. And in many cases, our tax dollars are being used for publicly funded purchases like yeah. buses and military equipment for companies to produce out of, out of Canada and then return them. So Canadian workers have, um, you know, have lost their jobs and while companies are making profits. That's not fair, that's not right, and we have to put a stop to that. And, and this is not acceptable, and it should not be acceptable to us in the black community. And that's why labor, we believe that we need to have a buy in Canada policy like other countries like Europe, Japan, China, United States. The Canadian auto workers who you know are really being hit hard by this have produced a pamphlet that I have a few to share with you about why we need to support this because right wing and government are trying to say made in Canada is too, uh, you know, too protectionism. Well, sorry, the United States has one. Everybody has one but us. And what's wrong with us? Having good jobs here in Canada mm -hmm. and buying goods here in Canada and making sure people who produce here in Canada don't pack up and, 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 and just leave old communities high and dry in the end. That has to stop. So made in Canada matters. Good jobs are good for, for the economy, they're good for the black community, and they're good for all communities, quite frankly. And also, good jobs and good unionized jobs are important because less jobs means more poverty, less jobs means less public services, particularly in the private sector. If we don't have those tax dollars coming in, guess what, our hospitals start to close, all the other services that we've been talking about this, this week, we will not get them. And, and, and the community supports will be gone. So we need our, pub, our private sector to thrive as long, along with the public sector. Um, so, you know, and that has to happen on all levels of government. Oh my gosh. So, I mean, <laughs> well, there's a few, less people, there's a few less people on this panel. Okay. <laughs> so for the black community, you know, as this conference has painfully outlined our current experience of racism and negative impacts show that not only do we need good jobs, but black workers need access um, to these jobs and fairness mm -hmm. for these jobs. Yeah. And labor, particularly um, organized labor, in all jurisdictions of this country must fight for and support employment equity and race, as we called it this week, race, uh, race equity. Because we must put those plans in place in our workplaces because barriers for, as we talked about, barriers for black workers are sometimes different mm -hmm. than for mm -hmm. other racialized groups. And as folks may or may not know, labor has traditionally been involved and supports wanting to build a world that is um, free from discrimination, a world which diversity is seen as an asset, as a strength, and as an advantage rather than a threat. And therefore, it's critical that labor supports and works with the black community to achieve legislation in every province to ensure equitable and access, access to employment and the availability of good jobs and good workplace conditions. This policy is essential to ending poverty in our communities and securing the full citizenship of all members of our society. However, to date, labor has not been successful or done a very good job, in my opinion, mm -hmm. in fighting for employment equity and race equity. And, and there are many reasons for that that I just can't get into, but we need to talk about them if we can um, during the Q&A. 
Uh, but at the OFL, I do want you to know that we are working on um, the ha putting in place an employment equity measures uh, for with, with some of the unions to push for such changes at the bargaining table. But the real push must be a collective fight to have governments make it the law. That's right. And that involves public support and lobbying <coughs> from labor with, with black and other equity-seeking groups. And in the fight for equitable access to employment, black women have been most vulnerable. Not only um, have women um, been confronted with racism and sexism, um, black women are, have double jeopardy, and I'm going to skip a little bit of that, and maybe I'll give you some statistics about why that is if I get a chance to come back, because I want to get to my third point. Um, and, you know, labor and our community need to work together to demand, um, demand goals that are related. But I want to talk about building solidarity and an action between labor and the black community. And I hope Marie lets me finish this point because it's really important and then I'll be done. Okay, so many, um, many black labor activists are involved in our communities and social justice issues. Some of us, like myself and Marie, are leaders at the top level of the labor movement as she described in our bios. But without a doubt, there's not enough of us. Um, and we continue to face internal struggles of racism, isolation, marginalization, and sexism from non-racialized leaders and at times sometimes from ourselves. Yeah. So, but, our, and I wanted to say, you know, at the workshop today someone said, our obligation as leaders is to speak about the truth. Um, and, and speak about the truth um, and, because the truth gives you power and not to back down. Not to back down and to mobilize and get the word out. So I totally thought that was so profound. You're right. We have to, we have to, right, put ourselves out there. And so, you know, we do that despite the differences we have amongst ourselves and despite what our non-black um, and, and, and racialized brothers and sisters say. Because let me tell you, it's really lonely sometimes up there on the top when you have no one to bounce things off of and get some advice as to how to move an issue like Afrocentric schools or um, campus racism, et cetera, et cetera. But our resolve is to fight for good jobs and strong communities and strong black communities and dignity and respect for all. And our will um, and, and the deeply seated values of justice for us to keep us fighting for both within and outside the labor movement um, must never waver because we need to fight to end the racism and the anti-black discrimination that's within our systems, both within the labor movement and within our workplaces. And can I just have one, 30 seconds, okay? Because I just want to say it's really critical because we also, in doing this, and why we need to build a solidarity within the labor movement in the community, especially now, because we need to fight to improve unemployment insurance mm -hmm. and EI. Mm -hmm. All workers are in need and are entitled to mm -hmm. and receive unemployment benefits. The period has to be extended, and it's our money, sisters and brothers, right. you yeah. have to be entitled to it. We have to fight for pay equity, we have to fight for the abuse against temporary agency workers and precarious work, and we need regulations in every single province to get rid of those temp agencies. Mm -hmm. And people who are working on the side of us should be getting the same pay, That's whether they're temporary or permanent. We have to fight against poverty. We've got to fight against fight for the rights of the disabled, gay, lesbian, and transgender, and Aboriginal people. And we have to work with student federations to end campus racism um, in our colleges and universities. Our young people deserve that from us. And we also have to fight for a living wage and the right for workers to join a union. And I wish I had time to tell you how important it is to mm -hmm. have union density so that everyone yeah. can have those benefits mm -hmm. and that we don't lose that. Because if we lose that, we're all going to lose. Right. So let's, let's fight for that and let's just fight for some global solidarity. And I'll, I'll end there. Thanks, Jerry. Thank Jerry made reference to some numbers. Let me just say that across Canada, it's been half a million workers that we've lost since 2005. So it's... It, it.